Measuring and Constructing Segments, Lesson 1.2. We have one previous video for this chapter, and it'll be linked in the description if you've missed it. We did a lot of definitions, so you may want to watch that one first. A ruler can be used to measure the distance between two points. A point corresponds to only one number on the ruler, and that number is called a coordinate. So we have a ruler postulate for you. You can write this down in a folder or a spiral to keep track of all these because you're going to need them if you do proofs. The point on a line can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence with real numbers. Now remember, a postulate is a statement that is accepted as true without proof, and they're also called axioms. We talked about that in the last video. So this says the points on a line can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence with real numbers. And we look at this ruler, and we can put a point, a coordinate, for each number with a one-to-one -one correspondence. See? And the distance between any two points is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. If the coordinates of points A and B, and notice these are capitalized, if the coordinates of points A and B are this lowercase a and b, then the distance between a and b is the absolute value of a minus b or the absolute value of b minus a. The distance between a and b is also called the length of segment ab or ab. So here we've got a and b as the capital letters and we can say the distance is this ab. So just follow with me in case you're confused, okay? So here's AB, the capital ones. According to this, the distance between them is the absolute value of A minus B or B minus A. See? Whatever this coordinate is, like a number on a ruler, minus this number on a ruler will give us the distance. See? So if AB equals 3 minus 8, what if on a ruler this was a 3 and this was an 8, okay? To find the distance here, we can do the absolute value of 3 minus 8, which is a negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is a 5, positive 5. We can also say it's 8 minus 3, which is the absolute value of 5, which is 5. Remember, the absolute value is its distance from 0, okay? we can find the length of a segment. So here we've got C, D, A, and B, and we can see they're numbered like on a number line. B, A is equal to 5 minus 2. It's the absolute value of 5 minus 2, which is the absolute value of 3, which is a 3. We can see that C is negative 4 and D is negative 1, so CD is the absolute value of negative 4 minus a negative 1. We have two negative signs here, so that makes a positive, doesn't it? That means we have the absolute value of negative 4 plus 1, which is the absolute value of negative 3, which is a 3. And congruent segments are segments that have the same length. So tick marks show congruence. And congruent means same size and shape. And this is the symbol for congruent. So we can say with one tick mark here and one tick mark here that these two sides correspond to each other and they are congruent. See? This side and this side with the two tick marks are congruent to each other. And the side with three tick marks and this side with three tick marks are congruent to each other. See? So congruent segments are segments that have the same length. And if there's a tick mark here and a tick mark here, we know they're congruent. It's saying from point J to K is the same thing as from point L to point M. See? And we can write segment JK is congruent to segment LM. And this is how we read it. Segment JK is congruent to segment LM. And tick marks are used to show congruent segments. But be careful. JK, just written like this with no bar over the top, represents a number, a distance. While this JK with the bar over the top is segment JK, it represents a geometric figure, a segment. And we use an equal sign for numbers, 
when there's no bar, like JK equals LM, and congruence, this congruent symbol for figures, segment JK is congruent to segment LM. See? We can use a compass and a straight edge to make a precise segment. So to construct a segment congruent to segment JK, what we do is we first draw a line and we choose a point on the line and label it J. All right. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. We take our compass. That's this trusty little guy. Okay. And I actually have a dry erase marker taped to it. So remember, that's a compass and that's a protractor. Okay. And it even has measures on here. I don't know if you can see on this curve right here, but there's measures. See that? Okay. See the measures? The little lines? So what we do is we choose a point on the line and label it J, like we did right here, right here, okay? We open the compass to the distance JK right here. So we're going to go like this and put the point on the J, and we're going to open it so it's the same distance. There we go. That's about right, isn't it? That's about the same. Then we put the point of the compass, this pointy part here, on the line, on the J, and we draw an arc through the line, like I did here. See this arc that got drawn? And we label the point of the intersection K. Let me put this down. So that means we can label this right here as K. All right, that's that spot that we drew the arc through. Just make sure the compass stays the same size when you're moving from this one to this one, okay? For us to say that a point B is between two points, A and C, all three points must lie on the same line. That means they're collinear, right? They, they're on the same line. So AB plus BC will equal AC. My drawings down here will help you. This is the segment addition postulate. You should write this down in your spiral also so that you can use it for your proofs later on. If B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. So B is in between A and C. We can see that. That means AB, this distance, plus BC, this distance, is equal to the whole thing, AC. That makes sense, doesn't it? It's kind of common sense. So that's the segment addition postulate. Using the segment addition postulate, B is between A and C, and it tells us that AC is equal to 14, and BC is equal to 11.4. They want us to find AB. So you could even draw a little picture to help yourself out. We know that B is in between A and C. So here it is on the line. We know AC, the big distance, is 14, and B to C is 11.4. It wants us to find this little piece, AB. We can do it with algebra. AC is 14. We don't know what AB is. BC is 11.4. We can add a negative 11.4 to both sides of the equation, which makes this a zero pair, doesn't it? So this is gone. 14 minus 11.4 is 2.6. Our AB drops down. We know AB is equal to 2.6. This little area right here is 2.6. S is between R and T. Find RT. Well, here we have S is in between R and T. And it's telling us that our S is 2x plus 7 and ST is a 28. And together, they equal 4x. We can use algebra. RT, the whole thing, is 4x. RS is the 2x plus 7. And the ST is the 28. What we do is we write it as 4x equals 2x plus 35, because we can regroup this, right? This is all addition, so we can just do 7 plus 28 and get 35. 
Now what we can do is subtract this 2x, or using additive inverses, we can say we're adding a negative 2x to both sides. That's going to create a zero pair here, and it's gone. And now all we have is 2x on this side and 35 on this side. We divide both sides by the coefficient 2. That gives us a giant 1x. And 35 divided by 2 on this side gives us 17.5. So we know x is equal to 17.5, but we're not done, OK? We need to find RT. That's the whole distance here. If 4x is the whole thing, and we know x is equal to 17.5, we can do 4 times 17.5, which is 70. So RT is equal to 70. See? Let's try another one. A midpoint is the point that bisects or divides the segment into two congruent segments. So the midpoint is the dead center. If M is the midpoint of segment AB, then AM equals MB. If M is the midpoint between these two, if it's dead center, then this AM plus this MB equals AB, the whole thing. So if AB is 6, if the whole thing is 6, that means AM is 3 and MB is 3. See? Here we've got four trees. We've got tree A, B, C, and D. Tree A is 365 meters from tree B, and it's 2 kilometers from tree D. Tree C is located at the midpoint of B and D. So this third tree is dead center between the B and the D, okay? How far is tree A from tree C? What we do is we do AB plus BD equals AD, and if we know it's 365 meters between A and B, we can do 365 plus the BD equals the 2,000 meters, because that's 2 kilometers, isn't it? 2,000 meters. We can subtract the 365 meters from both sides of the equation, or we can say we're adding negative 365. If we use additive inverse, it's the same thing. This is going to create a zero pair here, isn't it? So this is gone. We have a positive 365 minus 365. That's going to leave us with BD on this side and 2,000 meters minus 365 meters is 1,635 meters. So that's BD, okay? That's between here and here, okay? Well, BC would be half of that, wouldn't it? We've got from this tree to this tree is 1,635. Okay? What we can do is, we already know how much this is. We're trying to find from A to C. So we're missing this amount. Well, if this is dead center, all we have to do is divide the 1635 in half, don't we? We can divide it by 2 and get 817.5 as that midpoint. That's where tree C is, okay? So if that's 817.5, all we have to do is add that first 365 plus the 817.5, and that'll tell us the distance for AC is 1,182.5. That's from tree A to tree C. We divided this by 2, and this was one part. That was the other part. We added the 365 to that half of that, and we have the whole distance here. See? Okay. A segment bisector is any ray, segment, or line that intersects a segment at its midpoint. It divides the segment into two equal parts at its midpoint. So here I've got a piece of paper, and if you look, I've got two points, A and B, drawn on here. All we have to do is fold this paper so that point B is right on top of point A, like that, see? And where we fold it, that's going to be the segment bisector, see? Right at the midpoint. We know that's the center because we folded it in half and made the points touch each other. So AM here plus MB is equal to AB, see? 
And we know AM is equal to MB because we folded it in half and it was perfect. And we can use midpoints to find length. Here we've got point A, B, and C. We know from AB is 5X and from BC is 3X plus 4. And B is the midpoint, isn't it, of AC. AB is equal to 5X. BC is equal to 3X plus 4. We need to find AB, BC, and AC. We can use algebra. We solve for X. AB is equal to BC. This is a midpoint, so we know this distance is equal to this distance. That means 5X is equal to 3X plus 4. 5X is equal to 3X plus 4. We can add a negative 3X to both sides of the equation using additive inverses. That's going to make this a zero pair here and get rid of it. 5X minus 3X is 2X. Now we have 2X is equal to 4. We divide both sides by that coefficient 2, turns it into a giant 1X. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we know X equals 2. So if X equals 2, we can insert that into here, 5 times 2, and 3 times 2 plus 4. 5 times 2 is a 10. 3 times 2 is a 6 plus 4, which is a 10. Yep, they're equal, just like it was supposed to be. See? So AC would be AB plus BC together. The 10 plus 10 is a 20. So now we found that that's 10, that's 10, and that's 20. So we found AB, BC, and AC. Okay? Remember that betweenness means collinearity. So if B is the midpoint, it's in between A and C. That means it has to be on the same line. They're collinear. And a segment has exactly one midpoint. It's only got one dead center, doesn't it? Okay? So our next lesson is measuring and constructing angles. I'm going to be using our compass more. Okay, that's lesson 1.3, and I hope you're doing well. It's really important that you have a journal or a spiral to write down these postulates, axioms, and the upcoming theorems, because we are going to be doing proofs, and we need these at our fingertips so we can use them as our proof of a statement we make. Okay, so try to write those down if you can, and I'll see you next time. Bye.